Rishi Sunak arrived in Munich amid hopes that a new deal over trade rules for Northern Ireland could be just days away. A compromise could end years of acrimony with the UK's neighbours, but it could also anger democratic unionists and hardline Brexiteers. So the Prime Minister was walking a tightrope here, talking down the prospect of a breakthrough in time to present to his cabinet on Tuesday. I've been in Northern Ireland talking to parties there about the things that we need to fix. Uh, we're working through those. We're working through them hard and we will work through them intensely with the EU. But we are by no means done. There is no deal that is done. There, there's work to do and that's what we will set about doing. Right, where are we? Uh, we're okay. right, go on, I'll give you first, please. A joint statement with Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission President, talked of good progress though it's said that intensive work was still needed in the coming days. Both sides want to end checks on goods travelling between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. But the devil is in the detail, and there's still disagreement over the ongoing role of the European Court of Justice in overseeing any deal. Ukraine was top of the agenda in this first meeting with Kamala Harris, America's Vice President. All of us are here in Munich to discuss many issues, but predominantly our concern about Russia's aggression in Ukraine. Though Joe Biden's scheduled visit to Belfast in April is another reason why diplomats want the Northern Ireland issue sorted. The UK has spent over £2 billion arming Ukraine in the last year. And today the Prime Minister spoke of supplying longer range weapons. What are we waiting for, he asked. We're providing more arms in the next three months than we've done in an entire year because time is of the essence and there is a moment in this conflict where we can make a difference and help Ukraine win. Delighting Ukrainians in this audience, though for now his commitment is to train their fighter pilots and not to supply them planes. You know, these are complicated, complex uh, bits of equipment. They do need training, and that's what we are doing and starting that as early as possible. But what we've also said, and I said today, is that we will happily provide assistance to any country that is able to provide Ukraine with fighter jets right now. The UK strands ready to support those countries as well. Ukraine's foreign minister said that he believes those jet deliveries are only a matter of time. And outside this conference venue, many of these protesters were also asking for more, despite the risk of ever greater Western intervention triggering a wider war. Well, earlier I spoke to Lord Darrick, who was formerly the UK's permanent representative to the European Union, as well as ambassador to the United States. I asked him if there was a deal on the protocol that could be palatable to both Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party and the EU. The signals coming out of the Prime Minister's quick trip to Northern Ireland earlier this week uh, are, I wouldn't say they're overwhelmingly positive, but they're not negative. And the DUP are not at the moment saying no. And you have to presume that, that Prime Minister Sunak has given them a fair amount of deal, detail about where the negotiations are going. So maybe that's a positive sign, but look, uh, in the end, the DUP can't have, a, can't have a veto on this. This is being done in the interests of the people of Northern Ireland, and uh, the government has to decide in the end what those interests are, where the deal should be made, and just you know, assume that the DUP will, will act responsibly and come along with it. What is the benefit for Rishi Sunak in getting this done and over the line? First of all, it makes a real difference to people in Northern Ireland if you get these problems solved. Second, it stands up, arguably for the first time in his premiership, his uh, claim to be a problem solver. Third, I think it creates better atmospherics with the European Union. It doesn't, in my view, repair all the economic damage that Brexit is doing, but it can pave the way to more deals in the future with the European Union that will free up trade and travel. And fourth, I think it, it will help the UK-US relationship uh, because the Americans have been pushing hard for this, to, this deal to be done uh, and it could release the way to a Biden visit uh, later this year. You know the way the Americans think, don't you, Lord Darry, from your time as ambassador there. Do you suspect that they've been leaning on Rishi Sunak to try and pressurise him to get a deal done? Well, you could call it leaning or you could call it encouraging him. 
But Biden is, I mean, he regards himself as an Irishman, certainly comes from Irish background, is close to the Irish government. He wants to see a deal done that, uh, in his view, preserves and maintains the Good Friday Agreement uh, and that settles this, this problem uh, and improves relations between the UK and the Republic of Ireland. So, yes, the Americans are certainly take a very close interest in this. And uh, I think uh, a real improvement in UK-US relations is contingent on this deal being done. Would the EU have shifted at all, do you think? Or is this the deal that they were always proposing? So I think you will find that both sides have moved if this deal is done. And that, by the way, also reflects, I think, greater goodwill between the Sunak government and the European Commission than existed between the Johnson government and the EU Commission. And if there is greater goodwill now between the UK and the EU, not least from the EU's part, how much of that is down to our response here in the UK to the war in Ukraine, for instance? We have been the first uh, to uh, supply weapons and ammunition uh, to the Ukrainians. We've been in the lead on that. Uh, the Americans actually have supplied now much, much more, but I think we're the second biggest supplier. And I think that role has helped uh, as a byproduct to uh, improve relations with Europe. It's also given us something to talk to the Europeans about uh, and reminded everyone that it is crazy that we don't have a more structured security and defence and foreign policy process with the European Union because we share this continent and we share the problems that, and challenges that Europe faces. Kim Darek, Lord Darek. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.